But for now, we will proceed uh, with the Chair of Planning and Zoning Commission, Steve Olvaney. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for having me. Uh, I think Jeremy's going to get his little TV screen um, working. Uh, get a little bit softer lights. Lighting director. Jim Cambridge retired now, right? That's a great slide. Can you make it a little bit higher, Jeremy? Wow, now I, hold on, I'm turn on this baby. I got some special. No, I got some special thing. I can't see spit. I got one of these things, it doesn't work either, but it's all right. That's a good idea. I got it's a good Frank Kemp's got a cell phone. You know how smart this guy is. Wow, look at this. Everybody see that? There's only twenty seven slides, so you'll be okay. Okay. Here we go. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator, members of the RTM, my fellow elected officials, and the people of Darien here and watching at home on TV 79. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Stephen Ovadi, the chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and I'm glad to be here with you tonight. This is always a fun evening for me. Um, I enjoy this speech and being with you guys um, annually. I was recently re-elected as the chair of the Planning and Zoning Commission. I'm excited to deliver my report again, report again to tell you the state of Darien's Planning and Zoning Department and the local real estate market. Some of the reasons why I like being on the Planning and Zoning Commission is that I'm very proud of what we have done here and accomplished in, in Darien. And also, I'd like to see all the major projects through to completion. As you will hear tonight, there are quite a few of them. Uh, in my remarks to the RTM, I always take the opportunity to formally thank members who have decided to no longer serve and welcome new members who have either been appointed or elected. This year, though, I do want to thank all the board members as they take time out of their lives to make Darien a better place. Recent changes to state statutes require additional training for some board members, requiring even more of a time commitment on behalf of the members of the land use committees. I'm continually impressed with the folks who do decide to serve, so thank you to everyone. This year, a special thanks goes out to the Planning Zoning staff, especially Greer and Joanne, who are the two women that work in the Planning Zoning Office. Over the past two years, we have transitioned to, um, over the past two years, we transitioned to online permitting via OpenGov. And the secretaries have been fantastic in assisting homeowners, builders, and developers. They've also been instrumental in assisting all the land use board members in getting to use electronic packets where all the application materials are emailed out with links to save trees and hunts of valuable town employee hours. Thank you to everyone. We also get the fa these fancy iPad loaners. If anyone wants to get one, so if you do serve, you get an iPad. It's nice. During the past year and a half, we have seen unprecedented growth and development in Darien. The best way I can describe this to everyone is doubling down on Darien. Our grand list is growing, our commercial grand list is nearing a billion dollars, and with that, I'm honored to say that as part of, I was part of the group who met with the governor here in Darien who wanted to see for himself with the state director of economic and community development what we're doing here in Darien. Governor Lamont and Director Down visited Darien in November, as Mr. Zagrotsky said, to meet with the developers of the big three projects and see the major redevelopment projects here in Darien. 
He was very impressed with the work that we are doing here and the approximate $400 million worth of real estate development that is currently under con un in development, that's currently under construction. Thank you, Governor Lamont, for visiting Darien, Connecticut. Doubling down on Darien. As, our, as I've mentioned over the past few years, change is on the horizon. Well, I'm here to say that change is here and we are digesting it well. The year uh, in 2023 has been a year of doubling down and this is continuing. What I mean by this is that of the people who want to invest in real estate and development, many of them are choosing Darien. During the past year, I am pleased to say that Darien, we have seen a pattern of reinvestment that as a commercial real estate professional, I do have to take note. We have a number of local developers that have proven track records of success in Darien and want to create products and have created products that continue to add to the community. I'll speak more about that tonight and give you a peek into 2024. We also have a bunch of, a handful of national players that some of the largest and most well-respected real estate investment trusts in the country that continue to invest in Darien, Connecticut. While most institutional investors are sitting on the sidelines or pulling back from real estate, the REITs here in Darien and the local developers are doubling down. The, the three, cur three current local developers, th three local commercial class A buildings, um, owners and developers were recently purchased in the town of Darien in, 20, in this year. Those are 1500 Post Road, 9 Old Kings Highway, and 23 Old Kings Highway. Uh, and also, Baywater Properties is about to construct a new 90,000 square foot Class A office building, and more, of, and more than half of that building is already, is already pre-leased. All these people are doubling down on Darien. I'll start, off to, I'll start off by noting the resident develop, residential redevelopment that occurs in Darien every day. We have a number of local architects and builders um, who have constructed numerous residents throughout town and do fantastic work. The existing residents are also continuing to renovate and upgrade their homes. As soon, um, as, soon I, soon, as soon I will explain that this work is an essential piece of Darien's grand list, most years we see about 25 to 35 new residents constructed in Darien, and those are a key component of the grand list increase. Additionally, the town doubles down on itself. Excuse me, by expanding community facilities, all of which add to what, da what makes Darien great. As you, as you know, um, and have heard about the expansion of renovation plans for the three elementary schools, which likely will get started next year, and Jill will probably give us an update on that. We've also recently completed the beautiful new Oxford School that took a couple years projects, a couple years and had a couple different phases. The newest projects are the expansion of Weed Beach and the park swing sets. The town is in the final stages of approvals for the Weed Beach Meadows and Trail project, which, if approved, will step substantially increase and nearly double the size of the improved beachfront, plus with better parking and other beautiful areas for residents to enjoy. Another project that the, parent, the, uh, the, that the Planning Zone Commission recently approved is a conversion of a commercial building on the post road to create our first workforce housing project in Darien for our volunteer and fighter fires in the Roten Fire Station. This is an excellent example of finding ways to make Darien a better place and encouraging volunteerism in our, in our fire departments. BMW of Darien is one of the largest town employers. They are in the process of completing a multi-million dollar improvement project on their property, including a new car wash building, significant additions and alterations to other service buildings, and we're excited to see the work completed in 2024. It's great to see a successful business that wants to reinvent, reinvest and double down in Darien and create additional jobs. 
Regency Center's a real estate investment trust REIT added to their portfolio in Darien by doubling their footprint. Um, by doubling their footprint. Regency now owns two properties in Darien, the Goodwife Shopping Center and the Trader Joe's Center at 430 Boston Post Road. Regency is one of the largest REITs in the entire country. You see what I mean by doubling down on Darien? <coughs> the next is reinvestment. We talk about the big three. Here we go. The first is the redevelopment of the Neroten Heights Shopping Center, which is across the parking lot from the Palmer's Market. The project is well underway, it is now known as Heights Crossing. The two foundations for the foundations for the two mixed buildings, mixed use buildings, are nearly complete, and you will see the buildings come out of the ground right after the first of the year with an expected completion in 20, completion, completion date of 2025. As you can see in the slide that the redevelopment will be consistent in size with the nearby federal project, Darien Commons, and it will continue to transform that entire block, which is still and always will be anchored by Palmer's Market. The project is being built by Joe and John Ficaro, two longtime Darien residents, whose company is called V20 Group. Joe and John have an, ex an excellent track record in town, completing more than five projects already, and most recently, the back of Darien Playhouse and an upgrade to old, um, nine Old Kings Highway South, one of Darien's largest commercial office buildings. The V20 Group makes it to my list of doubling downers. Next, we have the federal project in the Roten Heights, now called Darien Commons, which is nearly complete, with the final commercial tenants expected in early 2024. This project has brought some much needed life to the block, especially in the evenings and on Saturday mornings at Gregory's Coffee. Their redevelopment is on the side of the former Stop and Shop grocery store, has created something new and exciting in the Roten Heights at the Darren train station. It is, one of, it is one of the most walkable commercial projects in town, connecting the neighborhoods to the north and east with the Neroten Heights train station by cutting through the entire center. I am pleased to say that Federal Realty, one of the largest investment REITs, trust, real estate investment trusts in the country, has also decided to double down on Darien. They have chosen to further reinvest in our community by posing upgrades to the existing building at 40 Heights Road, which many of you may know as Citibank or, Edward, or the Edward Jones building. They've also taken the opportunity to make significant improvements to the Equinox building, building both inside and outside. And in this case, the builder developer again shows confidence in our town of Darien, in our small little town of Darien. Finally, the last major doubling down project, but not the least, is the Corbin District. By now, you're very familiar with Baywater Properties, a local developer run by the Genevieve family that has completed a number of projects in the, te in the past 15 to 20 years. Way too many to itemize here. Needless to say, their work is very impressive and, and has improved our community time and time again. They have recently completed what I call Phase 1C, three replacement buildings on the east side of Corbin Drive. Phase, one and phase, one, phase 1A and Phase 1B or 10, 10, 1020 Post Road and the 34 Olds Kings Highway South, which is their headquarters. Phase 2, which has started, is on the west side of Corbin Drive and is about double the size of Phase 1. They have, thankfully, they have thankfully taken a break for a few works, weeks during the holiday season to minimize construction impact so everyone can easily park, shop, walk, and drive in downtown Darien. It's my understanding that the re relocated retailers in phase one, which opened during the summer, moved and transferred across the street without losing a step from their previous location and in most cases are now doing better in their new storefronts. The foundations of the phase two building are now underway and the project will continue into 2025. I am optimistic that the results will be fantastic and the real improvement 
and a real improvement over the old buildings that used to sit on that full block. As you may know, as you all may know, Baywater properties led by D David Genovese and his team are local. David started the Corbett District some 18 years ago. He went through the entire process, and when I first met him back then, he was all smiles and filled with excitement. <laughs> Today, here, in 2023, and almost 2024, David is still, still has the same energy, drive, and excitement, albeit a little bit more gray hair and glasses. Is David here? I asked his permission if I could say that, and he said yes. <laughs> I'm a real estate guy and I've been in the commercial real estate valuation analysis business for over 30 years, concentrating on new construction, urban, and suburban renewal. Well, we all know the results of all this redevelopment can be an inconvenience in a variety of ways. But I'm here to say that over the past year and a half, not one serious complaint has hit my desk, as well, maybe one did, of all the real estate development projects and all the real estate projects are forging ahead smoothly. Thinking long-term, redevelopment projects will have a significant positive impact by increasing the overall grant list and providing us with numerous restaurants, retail, and housing options. The grant list is comprised approximately 85% of residential values. Jim Palin tonight will get further deep into the grand list. It's his bailiwick. But what I want to tell you is that all the new mixed-use projects and commercial projects, with that, will be nearing a billion dollars in commercial value for our grand list. Uh, the economic impact of the big three is well in excess of $300 million. Right now, I think that's supposed to say 783, but you can't read it. But that's what it is. This development has the ability to shift some of the tax burdens away from homeowners and to commercial owners, and, and, that, and they need our support. Other towns, in commercial, other towns in Fairfield County and the state are fascinated with our project, as John alluded to, both commercial and residential, both in the commercial and residential redevelopment worlds. That is part of the what? Part of the reason why Governor Lamont came to Darien with the Economic Development Director last month. I know, I, as I've noted here, part of that can be attributed to doubling down builders and developers that have, that have created value and a great community to be in for all of us. It's important to remember that what really makes these projects successful, the retailers and the restaurants, is you, the town residents. Please support the town retailers, as John alluded to, shop, drink, and eat, and shop locally this holiday season and throughout the year. When we win, they win, and then we win again. All the taxes that these commercial property owners buys a lot of iPads for our public school kids and me, and also a lot of sand for our beaches. The residential graph, the residential growth graph shown now from the assessor's office pretty much summarizes everything. Residential property values, they continue to grow, they continue to increase. I think that's a win for all the homeowners in the town of Darien. Before I sign off, I do want I do want to give you a flavor of what's ahead in 2024. First, you may be aware with the pending application for a new car wash at the former Vortucci's site at the east end of town, which is by a Darien, um, business, a Darien based multi state company. Again, someone doubling down on our town. It is likely that the redevelopment of the three parklands building will be underway, underway soon as well into a new multifamily residential building. We are also likely to see the redevelopment of a number of other projects, including but, but not limited to Great Island. The Planning Zoning Commission did issue a positive report about the potential acquisition of the cul-de-sac um, is consistent with the 2016 Plan of Conserver Conservation and Development. And thank you all here tonight for voting to support this initiative 
earlier this evening. Finally, what I want to cover tonight is accessory dwelling units, which is a further effort to diversify Darien's housing stock. In 2024, the commission will decide how to address the planning and zoning regulation in accordance with state statutes and our peer communities. I expect we will have a couple of public hearing or hearings in February, and we do want to hear from community members. So RTM members, please stay tuned to this topic and provide any feedback that you may have. There are many more accomplishments and initiatives that I can talk about, time permitting, but as you can see in here, the state of the, the, state of the town of Darien, the Planning Zone Commission, and the Darien real estate markets are all doing great. We are very much a high demand community in Fairfield County, and we want it to stay that way. So in conclusion, so in conclusion, I want to wish you the best in 2024, and I look forward to updating you again a year from now, or any time you want me to come for a town hall type presentation. Thank you all for your time, support, and attention. Have a nice evening. <laughs>